finally a day that it's not hot as balls out in the garage. It's only 81 today. It's still warm. It ain't uh, sweat your ass off to the point where you're dehydrating yourself. So, uh, I'm sitting here, getting ready to spray this inside the subframe. Got the uh, subframe all cleaned up. Went over it with uh, wax and grease remover half a dozen times. It's not perfect, but it's not going to be a perfect paint job either. I just want it to look like nice and stop uh, rusting. So I'm going to be using this uh, internal frame coating that's black this time, and I'm going to be spraying inside the uh, frame rails. Let me give you a close up real quick here. There, but uh, yeah, we're going to use this. And the beautiful thing about Eastwood is they give you this nifty little tool. I gotta have to see if you can buy this from like Amazon or somewhere else. But you pull the cap off and you put this on there. And then it's got this little wand here. And you probably can't see it, but there's this little bitty hole at the top that kind of sprays it in a 360 degree pattern. And all you do is you take that and you stick it on the end of the cap. started it. Now, once you've done this, the best thing you can do is you can take the pre-painting prep from Eastwood and you can take this and put it on that cap and spray it through. Basically that's wax and grease remover so you can always reuse these little wands. So uh, I'm going to set the camera up and then we're going to go through and shoot the frame. said clean it up hook it up to a can of pre-painting prep <clears throat> pre-painting prep come over here in the grass and do this I thought that was pretty neat. The tip, you can turn just like a 
regular HVLP spray gun. It's also got a, it's very hard to read, an adjustment on it where you can set the dial for more fluid or not. I thought that was pretty cool. Not a very big can for $30. What'd you think I was gonna make you watch paint dry? Looks glossy, but it's gonna dry sand. See, it's starting to start to dry. It'll flash off of it. Alright, again, won't make you watch paint dry. All right, another hot ass weekend in the garage. Uh, as you can see, I flipped over the subframe. I, after it uh, paint cured on the bottom, I just flipped it over to try to find square level spots on the garage floor. Uh, you can see I got a stack of shims in the front. To level that all out. Uh, I fixed uh, this rear one. I have to remember earlier I said it was kind of cockeyed, a little high on the outside edge. So I just cut the plate in three sides, bent it down, made sure that it didn't warp the plate, and then just re-welded it in pretty decent welds. Um, had to clean up some crap. This is where they welded the, the front subframe with the subframe connectors way back in the day. Man, that was another pain in the ass they did this car. Um, that's a story for another day. So right now, I've got the front mounts uh, this one's cut off, and I got a shim in there to, to get, fix the gap. Uh, it was also uh, about an eighth of an inch off. This frame is twisted. Um, this this leg here is actually taller, or bends up a little more than that leg. And there's really nothing I can do about it. I don't have a frame table. I don't have a frame puller. I don't have any of that stuff. Um, I might look into doing it, but it's, I want to say it's like an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more. Um, I don't know, I'd, I'm just going to send it the way it is. And if uh, somebody sees this and says, no, go get it fixed, then uh, I'll go looking for a shop to see if I can fix this. But, but right now, I just want to fix the mounts. Um, like, like I said, I found level spots in the garage, uh, squared the frame off completely front to back. Uh, measured from the mounts to the floor, from the eyelets where the, f I went, when I did my measurements it was where the body mounts are, the core support mounts are, these mounts back here. So, a little tip, and I'm going to screw this up just because I got to clamp it all down anyways. But, a little tip, you know, there's no space See how I cut this with this jagged edge here and I left this jagged edge there that's so I can keep my orientation where I need it to be right if I had cut those two nibs off on one side and the other I wouldn't know exactly where this was supposed to go and I did get it right the first time when I put these in place right I made sure that when I did the measurements that I got it you know oriented right it wasn't too far out too, too, too far in or left or right um, so I wanted to make sure I kept those. So when I cut this, I kept reference marks for me. So maybe I'll uh, show you when I weld this. Maybe I'll do a video on that or do a capture on that when I get to that. But uh, 
for right now, I'm just going to tag it in place because where it's all leveled off in the garage is where the garage door has to close. So I'm not going to get this all finished today. So I got to tack weld it in place, make sure it's in the right spot, pull the subframe back in a little bit, and then when I go to weld it in complete later, I just got to make sure I don't warp it or make it, you know, any heat uh, heat shrinkage in the metal or anything where it moves. So that'll be next time. too much wire speed but still a good way to develop. All right so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna post a picture of how this looked before. I didn't fix this side it's not bad but there's a deep cut all the way through here I don't know what happened but I just weld that up closed. Let's see how nice it looks you can barely tell that it was there. Didn't do such a great job here because of the way the frame rails were bent but did the same thing here. This hole was uh, oval out all the way over here. And then just a nice shot of you know, what the plates look like. All fixed. So I bumped the frame so I can't show you how level it is, but you know, it looks, looks good. Uh, I'm confident that it's where it needs to be, especially considering that the frame is a little out of whack to begin with, but um, at least the frame mounts will be right. So. Uh, I'm going to get to shoot the paint on this. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll just do a quick uh, recap when it's all painted and dried. Oh, I'm sure you're all done listening to me blather about this subframe. So here it is. It's all done. It's all painted. Uh, I've got all the mounts corrected. I've reinforced the areas that I felt were not structurally strong. Uh, just a couple little bead welds in a couple spots. Funny little story, I uh, had some rattle cans of the Eastwood chassis black, which is what I wanted to do on here, it's a satin finish, and I ran out. And I had just portions of the front subframe left to do, so I ran over to Eastwood and guess what, they're out of stock on the satin finish. So what I did is I bought the uh, quart container that you can, you know, either brush on or put in a HVLP gun to spray on and that's exactly what I did. I broke out the HVLP gun and I had to respray the whole thing because I needed to mechanically bond what I had already previously painted to the new paint that was going on there. So that was fun put an extra day into the project. So but it's all done. So next up is I'm gonna get this uh, rear end all cleaned up. That'll be on the I don't know, two or three videos from now, because what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to get a helper over here and I'm going to flip over the car and bolt up the subframe. Um, and I might actually bolt up the rear end just temporarily. I don't know yet. i got to figure out if I can do it with the old leaf springs using the old mounts. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to test that out. Uh, but we're going to flip this over. We're going to patch everything. We're going to move the car, because when it's flipped over, it's all the way up against this wall and I need my blasting cabinet to blast a few things and I also need to get the engine out of here and the trans get those cleaned up fully and painted because they're going to go on the subframe without anything else on it that's a again future videos so you guys will sneak peek of what's coming up so uh, but the next video will be flipping the car over and lo and behold it's been the most popular video is talking about the uh, tip over jig so we'll, uh, we'll do a little video on that and celebrate the year of this YouTube channel and the most popular video. All right. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. If you can, hit the like button or subscribe. It makes me know that you're watching it and that this stuff's useful. I appreciate it. Thank you.